What's up everyone? I'm excited to announce that today is the day that we start our first programming tutorial in this series, which is my first series. Um, excuse me, this is like my third time recording this. I've had some technical um, audio difficulties here. <laughs> um, I wanna go ahead and move through this um, at a pretty good speed. I don't, I don't wanna miss any information, but I don't wanna take too long. So let's go ahead and just start ripping this up, okay? Um, so notice, um, I say programming. We're not gonna be learning a language. Um, I want you to understand that we're not learning a language, yet we're learning programming. Um, emphasize it. Uh, we're gonna be learning concepts and the applications of those concepts through procedural programming. We'll get some more on procedural programming when we start to code to give you more of an idea. Um, so this course, we're gonna go over environments. <clears throat> we're not gonna dive deep on them. Um, we're going to touch, touch base on IDEs, uh, maybe about system environments, uh, and what environments are. Uh, interpreters and compilers, which are types of environments, um, data types, control flow, which is a whole section that's going to take us quite some time, maybe a few, th four or three videos. Um, data structures, modules, input and output, errors and exceptions. This might look like, you, you might be thinking, what the hell is this? Y you probably don't understand anything like any, anything on this list. You probably don't understand. Don't let it intimidate you. We're going to go through all of this whole list and just break it down step by step. I'm going to make it real easy for you guys. Notice that I put beginner next to data structures. We're not going to go through binary search trees, no advanced algorithms to search and sort files, nothing like that in this, this series. This is going to be an introduction to programming, not a language. Um, so that's going to directly lead um, to this, which is we're going to be utilizing Python in this t tutorial. Um, we're not going to be focusing on syntax or anything. We, we'll obviously touch base on it. Um, but through um, these concepts, I'm going to use Python simply because it's one of, the s one of the easiest languages out there to learn and understand. It's a great language for new programmers to hop on and just get right into programming because that's what everyone wants to do. They don't want to sit here and learn all the syntax. They just want to start coding, you know? Um, so what defines a programmer? Well, let's understand uh, a straight out of the book definition of programming. Programming is the process of designing and building code to accomplish a specific computing result. It's not too complicated. Problem solving defines a programmer though. It's not, it's not, you can have, you can know five different languages. I don't care if you know 10 different languages, if you do, if you don't know how to problem solve, if you're not good at problem solving, then that's not, you're not a good programmer. You don't have to be a genius in syntax. That's gonna come along with practice. What defines a programmer is problem solving, okay? We're gonna focus on problem solving f most of the time. And as I stated before, this course is going to focus little on syntax. We all obviously have to consider syntax to write our scripts, but instead we're going to focus on programming concepts and applying those concepts. This course is going to have some required knowledge prior. You are going to have to understand math, um, the concepts of math and some basic applications of it. I noted pre-calc uh, because I want you to understand algebra and maybe some trig. Um, you don't really have to understand trig. You don't have to understand everything about trig. We might use some trig. I don't really know yet. So I just list, listed pre-calc. Um, it's, you should learn it either way if you're going to be a programmer. Um, this course expects that you understand how computer hardware interacts, meaning um, RAM and data drives, HDDs, SDs, SSDs. That's what, that's what I mean by data drives. I want you to know how RAM and these drives interact and how, C how the CPU interacts with the RAM. This all kind of goes into a straight line here. It's not hard. I'm gonna go ahead and, and link you the information for that, just not math, obviously. No programming knowledge is required. Uh, I am gonna assume that you know how to download and use software, so basic, basic level computer knowledge. If you're on this video and you, I, I have high confidence that you understand how to use a computer. So the approach, I'm not going to approach this as a college or any type of educational institution. 
Instead, I'm going to dive deep into concept, concepts that are often overlooked in these institutions or tutorials. Uh, I'm sure there's gonna, there's, I'm sure there's gonna be tutorials out there that, that dive into these concepts, but the ones I look at, they don't, it's real, real, they go too fast for people to actually understand the concept behind them. I'm gonna give you some background, like a, a nice definition of a computer. A computer is an electronic device that accepts information from the user or whatever um, and manipulates that information according to the instructions. In this case, the instructions are us, the programmers. We program the instructions for the computer. How is it going to handle that user input? Then we're going to display that information in some type of way in reference to our instructions. Then it stores information that we can retrieve it for later use. That's all the computer is, nothing more. Okay, if it has a set of instructions that it follows, we as programmers code that. Operating systems. I assume that you're aware of these OSs: Windows, OS X, iOS, Android. Now, software is just everything that the computer does it, it controls everything and that's what programmers do control everything the computer does data or maybe not the computer but the application and how that and how the computer reacts to our application data uh, it refers to words numbers figures sounds and graphics used to represent anything. It can be data can be anything that you can think of. If you're thinking of it, I guarantee you, I can make that into a statistical data, or statistical data, um, not a, but into binary digits. References bits, or ones and zeros of a computer, on or off, current or no current, true or false. A series of eight bits is called a byte. So eight bits are, is, is equal to one byte. 1,024 bytes is one kilobyte. Now, I, I know that some of you are going to be, well, it's a kilo, it shouldn't be a 1,000. You're not wrong, and you can say a 1,000 bytes is a kilobyte, and that applies for all of these, but in binary, it's not exactly a 1,000. It's actually a 1,024. So 1,024 KB and MB, and same applies. You can do the rest in your head. Bits... As stated before, there are zeros and ones used by the computer to store data. Given X pieces of data, you're actually going to need log base 2x bits to store the data. If, you, if you're not aware of logs, go and look them up. It takes about 10 minutes to understand them. They're not complicated, very easy, and quite fun. Think about a light bulb. How many states can it have? Well, we know two, on and off. Can't really think of anything else a light bulb can do. Um, what about two light bulbs? Well, they're common terms. Let's just multiply them together and get two squared states, and that's four states. And eight light bulbs, same applies. Two to the eighth states equals 256 states. You can think of this as a representation of bits. Okay, let's dive on uh, more on programming languages. Uh, languages uses different syntax to convert source code into machine code. This basically just suggests that um, the syntax that we use tells the computer how to convert the code that we program into machine code um, for the computer to understand. The code that we write, the computer is not actually going to read it line by line the way we write it. I mean, it is, but it's not actually going to comprehend it. Instead, it's going to use our syntax to structure the code so it's able to comprehend it and use it. And to convert it, the source file, the source code file, it needs to go through an, a compiler or an interpreter. Um, the main difference is uh, a compiler actually compiles the source code into machine code as an interpreter, uh, basically uses something else to allow um, maybe some like another software to interpret the code. Um, we'll de dive a bit in de more in detail with compilers and interpreters in our next tutorial. After compiling, <coughs> you will have an executable file. Y you've all seen them, the .exe. Uh, that's a compiled source code file. So it's compiled, it's ready to run. You can 
share it, do, do whatever you want with it. Um, let's talk about computational thinking. All knowledge can be thought of as decorative and imperative. Decorative are statements of fact. Pi equals 3.14159 and so on. That declares that pi, the reference, it's declared as 3.14 and so on. It, we're telling it what it actually equals. It, we're not telling it the imperative part, which is the how-to. So imperative statements are things like algorithms and you can reference recipes as in maybe in your kitchen you, you have a recipe it tells you how to make the recipe it doesn't tell you what it is so like the area of a circle that's an algorithm it tells you how to get the area but it doesn't tell you the area if it actually told you the area the number then that, that's going to be a decorative statement this the algorithm is simply the imperative part it's the how to the decorative is the actual declaration aspects of languages so we have now this just not, this does not apply to just programming we have primitive constructs in english um, which are words that's our pr that's our primitives in english and how we build those words is called syntax so hello sir is syntax you book floor is not valid syntax nobody says that so you have syntax that builds from the primitives so in python we have numbers and strings and simple operators such as plus minus etc strings just a sequence of characters we'll talk more about that in our next tutorial but what i want you to understand is that we have primitives and that we use these primitives together to create syntax we'll talk some more on this in the future i want to go over errors we have uh, three main error types, which is syntax, syntax errors. Um, when you have a syntax error, like I was saying before, the syntax, it tells the machine how to compile or interpret the source code. So if you have a syntax error, the machine is going to be like, well, what is this? I can't comprehend this. I don't know how, what to do with it because there's a syntax error. So it won't even compile. It, the process won't even start. Um, then you have runtime errors. Runtime errors, the program will, will execute. It, it will compile, do whatever. But during <coughs> the runtime, so live in the program, you, you might invoke something <coughs> that wasn't correctly coded, and it crashes the whole program. If you ever played a game and experienced a game crash, that is probably a runtime error. Uh, something wasn't handled correctly whenever that error was thrown so the computer didn't know what to do so it, it crashed the program it stopped stopped running and then we have the infamous and notorious logic errors and these truly are the worst because if you have 10,000 lines of code and you have a logic error that the program runs fine you, you can't even tell it's broken but say <laughs> instead of having a damage scale of, or a DPS of, like say you're playing some shooting shooting game and uh, your gun has ha is supposed to have a DPS of maybe 10, 10, 10 damage per second, instead it's a million, so you're one hitting people. Um, that's a logic error. And that can be painful if you don't know where to locate it because with syntax errors and runtime errors, uh, the debugger would actually tell you the specific line the error occurred Syntax er errors are the easiest. Run, I mean, basically runtime and er runtime and syntax errors. They're they're going to give you a line to go and check. But logic errors don't. So if you have thousands and thousands of lines of code, it's going to really really suck for the programmer to go and find that. Um, so we, we're going to go over some common beginning errors for uh, initial programmers. I want you to go ahead and note these down. And when we start programming, I want you to focus on these four main common errors. There's missing brackets and parentheses, missing quotation marks, missing colons, and misspelling names. We're going to dive more deep to the names, but for now, I want you to list these down. And when we start programming, check your code before you even execute for these four common errors. That's enough for now. 
wasting up your time. Uh, I'm sorry, this, this might have been long, I'm not sure. Um, but stick around, we're going to start programming in our next tutorial. See you. <laughs>